Good morning. It's another good morning. It's another day that the Lord has made. He's always creating new days every day. And this is the day again that the Lord has made. And we're excited to have you visiting us this morning here at New Identity Ministries because we know how much God loves you. And we understand that he has only good plans for you. That's why we keep emphasizing 3 John 2, where it says, Beloved, I wish, this is God's heart to you, above all things, that you prosper and that you be in health. Say amen. We always, you know, whether you sing amen, and just keep singing because a prayer of agreement avails much, just like the prayers of a righteous man. Very effective. So, this lesson, and we're again excited to have you with us here this morning, is called Renew, Acknowledge, and Experience. A question. A question we have for you this morning is, how does your faith become effective? Because the way it works for you is the same way it works for me and everybody else. So how does your faith become effective? Think about that. Think about that a little bit as we go through this short lesson this morning on the importance of renewing our mind, on acknowledging, and the purpose is so we can experience. And that's the good news about the gospel. We know Jesus already finished everything. He went to the cross. He became sin for you. Hallelujah. So that you could become the righteousness of God in him. So, it's awesome to meditate on the word because whatever you focus on grabs your heart in some way. And we want and we know that the issues of life come out of our heart. So we want to be careful to focus on what God says. No matter what we're going through, he already said you're going to the other side. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So think about this. When the disciples got into the boat and it was all stormy, Jesus had already told them they were going to go to the other side. That's why Jesus wasn't worried about it, even though there, it was stormy. But guess what? As soon as Jesus, they were in the midst of the sea, and it was at the worst. Jesus got into the boat, and they were translated right immediately, it says, to the other side. So, Jesus lives in your born-again spirit. And we are going to go through a little lesson again this morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we are talking about renewing, acknowledging, and experiencing. So, let's just go through this little lesson. The question is, how does our faith become effective? So, get ready. We're going to go through a short lesson. We would recommend you write these scriptures down because the word is effective. It's powerful. It is like a hammer and it can break the stony soil of people's hearts. So, go let's go ahead and get started. Most Christians, listen closely. Just listen. Don't get offended. Although, I'll tell you, when I left the Mormon church, one of the ways I got out was my heart started to get offended. 
because I saw books that said, <laughs> books that said Christian, um, Mormons were not Christian. And I completely did not understand that because I knew, good morning, Donna, that we were part of the Church of Jesus Christ. That's part of the, that's what but their official name is. Guide and all, what oh, yes, do? I was all those things. I already told actively them. Actively involved? Oh, I was very actively involved. Good I, people. Very good, family oriented. Um, teaching their kids. I was. I went to seminary every morning <laughs> before I went to high school. <laughs> so, I was entrenched. You could say I was so entrenched. It was a miracle. Could you have been uh, Saul's? Uh, <laughs> I could have been Saul Saul's of Tarsus. Daughter. Yes, yeah, Saul's, <laughs> Saul's daughter. But the. The difference for me is I always Amen. knew that there was a God and there was a Father that loved me. I just thought it was by my works that I would have relationship with him. And we know that Jesus became sin for us. Amen? Why did he do that? It's so that we could become the righteousness of God in him why you know that word righteousness is a religious cliche it you know it really some some of these words lose their meaning but what it really means because they're used so much what it really means is you have right standing you can go right into the throne room of God anytime you want to that's how much he loves you not unlike the you know you're so different from the priests who went into the Holy of Holies, into the throne room in the Old Testament, but they had to have a rope tied around them. <laughs> ding, ding. Ding, ding. <laughs> because, guess what? They, God, they didn't have the righteousness of God inside of them. Jesus had not come yet. That was a good analogy. Isn't that awesome? But today you can go boldly. There's nothing ding, to stop ding. you from having relationship with God. So, we need to, as born-again, spirit-filled believers, good morning, Gail, good morning, Donna, we need to make sure we are not dominated by our five senses, because the flow of the spirit inside our born-again selves, inside our born-again spirits, gets dammed up. It's like a dam and the water cannot flow when it's blocked up like that. So we want to learn how to let the life that's inside of us to stay turned on. Turned on how to turn that valve. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, so that the spirit can flow out of through our mind, our five senses, and affect our environment, including our physical bodies. So, we need to renew our mind every day in the Word and understand that the change that happened when 2 Corinthians 5.17 refers to the old is gone, the new has come. When you received your born-again spirit and got reconnected with God, you became filled with his presence in your spirit. And that's what we start acknowledging. Everything that took place in our new spirits. Say amen. Because that's how faith works. So, the truth is, as soon as I got born again, as soon as you received Jesus Christ as Lord, good morning, Tina, as soon as you received the Spirit of God, but got born again, you became reconnected. And in your born again spirits, you have everything you'll ever need to live a victorious life. Hallelujah. So, we, good morning, Rose. We need to understand that the Christian life 
from then on is not a process of getting from God what we don't already have. No, no, no. It's literally about acknowledging so that you can receive effortlessly what God has already placed, already, in your born-again spirit. Say amen, because it's good news. And Paul wrote about the almost too good to be true news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The salvation that God so loved the world. He loved us, and it says in the New Testament, he doesn't want anybody to perish, but to have life. Jesus came to give you abundant life. So, we need to keep renewing our mind in God's Word so that we can release to the fullest what God has already placed in our born-again spirits. So, and you know what happens to doubt when you keep acknowledging what God has already placed in your born-again spirits? Think about it. Doubt is eliminated. It just goes. Because how can it remain in a spirit that's filled with the presence of God, with the Holy Spirit, and with all these gifts of the fruit of the Spirit? So, this is the question again. How does our faith become effective? By. By acknowledging and renewing and acknowledging and renewing and acknowledging and renewing our minds in the Word of God every day. And as you make the Word of God the thing that you listen to every day and you lift it. It says God's word is he holds his word even above his name. And yet we know his name is powerful. And at that the name of Jesus, everything will bow eventually. Doesn't matter what it is. Everything in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth will bow to the name of Jesus. And yet he exalts his word. And see, as we're speaking his word, as we're meditating on it, and his word comes out of our mouth, guess what? We are planting seeds. We are literally planting seeds. And there will and those seeds that we speak, because we have the Spirit of God inside of us have power and inside those seeds that energy inside they have the power to reproduce after its kind so be careful what you're speaking when you see anything that does not line up with the Word of God that you read in the mirror remember God's Word is a mirror when it doesn't line up you say I don't think so you say, I don't think so. My God said <laughs> that he, he calls me his beloved. And he said, beloved, I wish above all things that you, Tina, prosper. That you, Ralph, that you, everybody, on this, Joan, Rose, prosper and be in health. And the key is renewing your mind in God's Word. So, under the New Covenant, see, Jesus came and He created a New Covenant. We have already His fullness inside of us. I'm going to give you a scripture. Please write it down. John 1 16. This is what God gave us the instant we were born again. The instant, as Jesus said, we were born from above. Just as he was when he went into the water and the Spirit came down as a dove. It was not a dove, but it came down as a dove and lighted upon him. And it 
filled him. And we know what happened after that. Isn't that awesome? We can study that, but it's not for the today. Today is about renewing what and acknowledging what's already in our born again spirits because what Jesus did for us. So, the rest of our Christian life needs to be learn to learn how to manifest how to manifest in the physical realm what's already in our born again spirit that's why we renew acknowledge so that we can experience so we know god's power lives inside of us it tells us that in ephesians says the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. And it was such a great power that, think about the power that it took to raise Jesus from the dead. That was tremendous power. <laughs> it was greater than any nuclear power that we've seen or heard of. Because all hell was trying to keep Jesus, the Son of God, from rising from the dead. Were they, were they successful? No. In fact, Jesus ascended to the throne of God. He sat down and he said, it is finished. Hallelujah. So, when we got born again, let's just rehearse, let's repeat this. Faith comes from hearing and hearing and hearing so that we can acknowledge when we got born again or became a believer, that's when God put his power inside of us. His power, his anointing, his victory, his joy, his peace, everything in abundance. And you know, doesn't that make sense why Jesus said in John 10, 10, I came to give you life, not take it away. I came to give you life and that life more abundantly. So. The only reason sometimes we aren't manifesting what we want in the physical realm is because we're not renewing our minds in the Word. Instead, we're renewing our minds in the news every day. Amen? <laughs> and there's got to be a balance because we want to see what God has already done. Amen? Produced and manifested in your life. That's what God wants, and that's what our heart is as well. So, we are not to be conformed to the image of this world. That's what it teaches in the book of Romans, chapter 12. We don't want to be conformed and poured into their mold. No, they are trying to form you and put you into their mold. You know, kind of like Jello. You put a, you get a little dish that's got already got a shape to it. Wilton used to make them, and uh, you could pour your Jello in, and whatever that mold was, or whether it's bricks, a foundation, whatever. There's other ways you could apply this. That's how it would get set, and then the only way you could uh, you know you have to do a lot of work to get that hardness that rocky stony soil in the heart to break it up again so you can help them help people be transformed into the image that's already in their born-again spirits so think about this transformed is the image of a little caterpillar that builds its little cocoon. And what happens? In the fullness of time, just like Jesus came, in the fullness of time, that caterpillar breaks through the cocoon itself it, and be, is transformed, metamorphosized into a beautiful butterfly. We love those butterflies. Every once in a while we see them. And uh, I love the monarchs. They're gorgeous. But our minds, our thoughts and attitudes are going to be what determines what we experience. 
whether we experience victory in this life or not, whether we experience the life of God that's already in our born-again spirits or not. And that's our heart is to help you, help us to keep our minds renewed every day. I heard someone say, Jesus is so daily. And it's really true because any relationship that you have, that you value, requires time every day. Whether through prayer, my husband and I, if we don't talk at all, there becomes a disconnect. God wants us to stay in communication with him. Amen. Every day. He so loves you. And we want to see you be victorious. So renew your mind in the word every day. And that's going to facilitate. It's going to help. It's going to help transform your mind. Renewing your mind in the word is going to help transform your mind. God's word is what should give us our attitudes. Remember the free offerings here? Oh, yes. And it should give us our new values. And yes, we would encourage you, if God has moved upon your heart, to give. We don't need your money, but we know that where our heart is, where our hearts are, that's where our treasure is. And there's many people that are in dire need right now. And they would be blessed. We know that God wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So, go to newideanme.com and slash giving. Oh, and you can give. But there's also, because we don't want, we don't need your money. We want to give to you some free gifts. And those free gifts are confession cards that will help you to keep your mind stayed on God. They are pamphlets, trifolds that have been created that help you remember that you truly are the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. And that's so important. So, today is the day that the Lord God himself has made. And we're going to continue to rejoice every day. And we do want to encourage you to stay renewed. Be careful what you allow to transform you. What you allow to put you into a mold. Because you want to be that amazing caterpillar that breaks through the mold it's put into, into that everlasting life that God has already put inside of you. We love you. Go to newid.me.com slash store and you can download your free gifts. We would encourage you. There is a God's love for you card if you just go to the the home page and you fill it out just put your email in there you're gonna get a confession card on God's love for you and at this season this Christmas season we want you to be able to give to your loved ones something that can transform them into the mold that God has already planned for them. Amen? So this is the day that the Lord has made. Enjoy. Yes, Tina, you're right. Confession is good. It is good for prospering the soul, and that's the key 
to third John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and you be in health even as you prosper your soul. Have a wonderful day in Him. Ha we'll see you Sunday at 9 a.m. No, 9, 10. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Have a great day.